everybody, AJ Rizek here, and today I'm going to show you how to convert a Wi-Fi router into a Wi-Fi access point. So, you know, maybe there is an area of your home where you don't get good reception, and, uh, you know, maybe it's, uh, maybe you've got uh, out in the garage you want to have Wi-Fi out there, the signal doesn't reach out there, or you got an outbuilding in the backyard, uh, you know, whatever the reason is, this is a cheap and easy way to extend your Wi-Fi network so that you can get coverage, you know, throughout, you know, whatever it is you're doing. Hey, maybe you've got a, you know, a small business and, uh, you know, you need to extend it throughout, uh, you know, all the cubicles or, or whatever. Once again, like I said, it's, this is a cheap way to get good Wi-Fi through the, through the whole area. In my case, uh, I did this in my home a couple days ago. Um, now, I have a 1970s era tri-level home. Uh, my home office, which is in the lower level, is where our cable modem comes into the house. It, and, you know, I tried placing the Wi-Fi router all over the house. No matter where you place it, uh, there was some area of the home that you did not get good reception. Now the the latest setup that I had done is I just kept the Wi-Fi router uh, down in the home office. Everything on the lower level, great reception. You went to the main level, which is where like the living room and kitchen, uh, that sort of thing is, um, is pretty good. You got four out of five bars. You went to the bedrooms in the upper level, uh, it was it was bad reception. Usually it was one, maybe two bars, depending on on the device. Um, you know, so you're not getting good reception up there. Um, and you know, my wife, she likes to, um, she likes to go into the bedroom and sit on the bed and do her, do her work, um, on her laptop from up there. And for just cruising the internet, it wasn't, it wasn't bad, but when she had to upload, download files, uh, it took a while because of the reception. And then also, if you wanted to, uh, if you wanted to stream media up there, it it just didn't work out for you. So, what I did was ran a uh, I ran a coaxial cable up there, or I'm sorry, a, a Cat5 cable up to the second floor, and in the hallway put a uh, a second router, which is being used as an access point. And let me go and open up find Firefox here okay this is the particular router that I added and part of the reason was I already had this as my main the the main Wi-Fi router in the house I had experience with it I I, I like the um, you know the features the design and all that and in uh, you know they're relatively cheap now uh, because that is a, this is a wireless N router you know, it's not wireless AC, so it's not the fastest that is out there. But having said that, we only have one device in the house that has a that that uh, can utilize wireless AC, so it's not a big deal that we don't have wireless AC in the house. Anyway, um, like I said, uh, we already have this particular router as our main router, and I found and and just looking here. You know, for a brand new one, you're going to pay about 60 bucks. But in the used and refurbished models, 20 some, 40 something, and then looking over at eBay for the same thing, uh, you know, 20 bucks, 15 bucks, uh, mid 20s, maybe 30 once you get into shipping. So you can pick these up rather cheaply. So let's get this project started. Here you can see the back side of my router. Now depending on your brand and model and whatnot, layout's going to be different, but you're going to find the same basic connections. First thing I did, powered up the router and then held in the factory reset button. And you can see here where I labeled the, the reset button on, on this particular model. Hold it in, I don't know, 15, 20 seconds and you'll see all the lights on the router start to blink. That means it's resetting the firmware to factory defaults, which is what we want. After that, we are going to connect a Cat5 cable from 
uh, the backside of our router to our computer. Now, on the computer, we want it completely disconnected from the internet, and be sure on the router that you're connecting to one of your main connections that I've marked here. Do not use the one that says internet. Uh, we will not be using that at all. So, after connecting, we're on our computer, and uh, I opened up Firefox and we're going to put in the default well actually before we do the the, the default uh, IP address we're going to wipe out the history on uh, on Firefox just so there's no issues you know uh, we're not pulling up a previous version of anything uh, no cache or anything like that so let's put in the default address for our router and depending on the brand it's going to be different and you can see from from here for for my router it's 192.168.1 and dot one so we'll go to that and we get the message that the router's not set up and we'll just kind of walk through setting it up here okay and it gets us to the web interface and it takes a little while for it to actually load up okay there we are now we're gonna to have to put in the default uh, uh, router password in the case of, of my brand of router it is simply admin uh, depending on what brand you're using, it may or may not be different than that. You'll you'll have to check if you're using a, a different brand of router. So anyway, uh, once we've done that, we can now access our interface. So first thing that we are going to work on is we'll go to our wireless settings and we'll go up and set up our network names, passwords, that kind of thing. So I think most of this is pretty self-explanatory. You know, give yourself a, a, a host name, uh, what kind of security mode you want to go with. I always go with the, uh, the hardest security to crack there is. And I'm just going to, you know, give a BS password right now just, just for demonstration purposes. And then I'm going to go and I will pick a channel for both the, uh, for both the 2.4 for uh, uh, wireless and then also for the 5 gigahertz network um, and then for my actual my actual main router which is down in uh, like I said which will be down in the lower level I'm going to pick different channels just so that uh, we can avoid any possibility of interference uh, with with the routers being on the same channel that sort of thing so you can see me there doing the same, you know, picking my channels and whatnot for the 5 gigahertz network and a password, all that kind of stuff. Okay, and let's go and apply those changes. Click yes. So with the wireless settings done, we are now going to go to, uh, in my case, it's listed as connectivity. Uh, you might have, uh, you know, depending on your interface, just something that says uh, local network. So here we are going to go and take the default address and we'll change the, the um, last section of the digits. So I changed my final digit from 1 to 50. And then over on the side where it says DHCP server, we want to deselect that and then apply those changes. So it'll take a little bit for those changes to be applied and whatnot. Now, the new address that we gave for, you know, under router details, write that down because if you ever need to access this particular router again, that is the address that you will have to use to access the router itself. So we're essentially done now. All we're going to do at this point is we're going to connect our Ethernet cable from one of the Ethernet ports on the back of our main router, connect it to one of the Ethernet ports on the back of our, um, our access point router. Once again, do not use the one labeled Internet. Use one of the 
one's labeled uh, Ethernet, uh, power it up, and we are essentially ready to go. I mean, that's all there is to it. This is, you know, really easy to do. So this project ended up as a big success for me. Pretty much everywhere you are in the house, you now get great uh, uh, Wi-Fi service. Uh, and also, we now have uh, some people using the secondary router, some people using the primary router. So, you know, everybody's not using the same signal source. Yeah, it kind of splits things, splits things up. So the issues that we had in the past were everybody was, you know, on their laptops or using a tablet or, or their cell phone all at once, uh, you know, and o essentially overloading the network. It's not happening anymore because people are, are split up depending on uh, on which router they're they're hooked up to. So, like I said, uh, pretty successful for me. Uh, definitely give it a try if you've got uh, connection problems in your house. Uh, uh, and uh, I think that's about it. If you've got any questions, comments, all that kind of stuff, leave it down below. I try to get to it as soon as possible. If you're not a subscriber, please subscribe. And I hope to see you all on my next video. Thanks a lot.